Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where your Teach Better family gets to join you live every single morning at 7 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. Joshua Stamper is live with me as we dive into our bright and early Monday morning show. It's not Monday at all. I think it's Monday because I'm so tired. Josh, it's not Monday. People are going to freak out about that. I just meant morning show morning show. This eventually will go well, guys. Josh, we'll be right back and I'm going to wake up. I'm going to grab my coffee. Got some sparkling water with me. Let's get the show on the road. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday, December 13th, which is, you know, important thing to know in the morning. Josh, how are you feeling? Well, I think better than you, Ray. I, I'm i guessing it just feels like a Monday for you. You know, when it's tiring, it's in the morning, I am going to wake up. I got coffee. I even poured myself sparkling water, like to feel fancy. I feel like I just need to get my head in the game. And I'm, every I'm, time, I'm ready. Every time I'm with you, you have a fancier and fancier drink. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to embrace my mornings. I'm trying to bring in some of the, you know, the luxury that we all want to feel like my mornings will feel less chaotic if I bring in fancy stuff. What, I mean, do you, I mean, you have 19 kids and counting. How any of that a part of your morning routine? Bringing in the calm, bringing in things to help the enjoyment. No. Before the chaos. Survival. No. <laughs> survival. Survival of the fittest. That's really what my mornings are about. Fair. Fair. I get you. Makes sense. But you know what, Josh? I just hope that everyone's having a good Wednesday. That's all I wish. I hope everybody's having a good Wednesday. Um, maybe someone out there didn't have school Monday and Tuesday, and today feels like a Monday, even though it's a Wednesday. I don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing. I, I could just imagine people like pulling off to the side of the road, checking their calendars to make sure that... <laughs> Yes. It's yes. not Monday. Like, wait, it's the 13th. I've already gone to school twice this week. Why? <laughs> Why is she saying Monday? Why is Ray messing me up? I want to. I'm so sorry on behalf of the entire Teach Better team. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Really noted. I think everyone yeah. probably is feeling the, the stress and the chaos and not knowing what day it is. I think that's pretty fair around this time of year. Yeah, makes sense. I get it. So, um, Josh, not to put you on the spot because I'm not putting you on the spot. The Teach Better team produces a lot of content. There's no way to read every blog, listen to every podcast, catch every live stream. Like, there's just no way. None of us do it, myself included, even though, thankfully, I'm on a lot of the live shows. So I can at least attest that I, I get access to those. But, geez, I probably read the blogs once a week, I would say. So I'm always, a, I'm always like a week behind. Yeah. Um, and podcast shows, there's no way there's, there's so many teach better podcasts over at teach better podcast network. Um, you got to go check that out friends. But my question is for you, did you catch the Sunday live stream this last Sunday with Brad? No, I'm sorry. See, Ray. It's okay. There's no shame. There's literally <laughs> no shame. I'm telling you because Brad and I were live. There was no guest. We actually did a number of good things, and I'm glad you didn't watch it because I want to bring it up because it okay. a few people, I'm sure, who listen to the Teach Better Today morning show may not have caught our evening Sunday show. Um, we are going to be kind of on like a holiday for the next two weeks. We're coming back with that Sunday show in you know January, so maybe maybe those of you listening, if you don't catch the Sunday show, you might want to add that to your your second semester, right, to enjoy, but... Josh, we talked about two key things I thought you'd be yeah. interested in that I'm bringing up to you since we have not gotten to caught up to catch up since. Okay. Yeah. First thing is we talked about tattoos. <laughs> Second thing is we talked about teacher and educator questions that I have prepared. There was 20 of them, but we only oh. talked about like three or four. So I was going to pose some to you as well during our, our team talk. So tattoos first, you recently finished your tattoo sleeve and yeah. we Brad and I discussed it because oh, yeah. today on the 13th I'm headed to the studio. Are you really? 
I am. I feel like you totally inspired me slash pushed me slash forced me to do this. I don't know about the other two, but definitely probably inspired. I know that. Yeah. So I don't know if I can even pull it up because I have like 15 layers on because it's so freaking cold. But you can see. Yes. There's mountains and stuff, but. Is it really that cold or are you just used to the heat of Texas? I want to say it's that cold, but I am definitely not acclimated. Okay. I know like eventually my Minnesota blood will like thrive again, but at, right now I am a very wimpy Texan and I even hate saying that out loud, but yeah, That's I've great. got multiple errors on, but yeah, I, uh, it, it's not a full sleeve yet. I still have some room that, you know, some, some real estate that needs to be inked, but, uh, for sure I'm getting close. Uh, that's always been a goal was to have a full sleeve on my left arm. I love it. And obviously there's lots of designs. I love the like mountains, trees, any, if any of you get to see Joshua Stamper in person anytime soon, you got to check out this crazy cool sleeve of tattoos. So, so fabulous. Josh, do you know what's going in the empty space or is, are you still waiting for inspiration? Like maybe the teach better community here could, could lend a hand and let you know. Yeah, I think. And if you want to drop it in the comments, if there's some type of imagery you think would look great. But yeah, this is definitely my Colorado tattoo. I've got the the snowy capped mountains in the background with pine trees and all types of different things in the background. So yeah. And then of course, I've got my my giant lion on my arm, which is one of my favorite tattoos. So uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely itching to get some more. Obviously, Ray, you're, you've you been itching too. And I'm curious Clearly. what you're going to get on so I may do a little teaser. Yeah, a little teaser. I'm not going to reveal what I'm getting. Okay. Because I did on the Sunday show. So if any of you want to go check out the Sunday show. But here is my question, Josh. Do, do you have any color? No. Okay, so me neither. And I'm debating on adding a little Teach Better Green. Okay. And I have been debating that and not knowing how much I want to commit to it because color makes me very nervous. So I'm kind of considering like a teach better green heart, teeny, 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 tiny to see if I like the color to then like see it. if the other piece that I'm actually going in for maybe is white or black or teach better green or I don't know. Like, I guess it's any, any suggestions here would, would be helpful. How do you, how do you test a color? I think you got to just do a go, go for it and do a teach better green heart somewhere. I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to, turn to the audience again and say, you know, yes. give some feedback. Should Ray get color on her tattoo? Yeah. And I asked on Sunday as well. So if you have not weighed in, we would love to hear your thoughts. And you're going to get like the green heart right behind your ear. Or I don't have a location either. Yes. So I have, <laughs> so I have something I am getting, but um, yeah, the green hearts come my way to, to test the color. And I'm kind of thinking, well, green hearts easy to say yes to like, that's our entire network. It's changed my life. Sign me up. Like, but where? Like, that's not the intention. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, right, who knows? Let's, let's see that feedback, folks. It'll be so help, good. Help Ray out before she sits down in the chair and makes yeah. that permanent decision. We have, we have some time. We have a few hours. I don't think it's until like two. We got plenty yeah. of time. Be fine. Perfect. Keeping on the same track, I'm also going to pose a few questions to Joshua Stamper related to our Sunday show. I will give more context. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Teach Better Today morning show. My name is Ray Hewer, and we have Joshua Stamper here with us from the Teach Better team. We're very, very excited to bring you a fun team talk segment because these questions that I'll be posing to Josh all come from people like you in our community. Josh, what we did is we went through some listener questions and tried to find some fun ones we haven't answered yet. There's definitely a whole bank of questions. Thank, thank you to our like Teach Better network that continue to share fun ideas, fun questions for us to discuss both 
in the classroom problems and administrator problems and really anything that falls in education or, or business wise. And I took a few, threw them into chat GPT and asked them to add some flair, some personality, some, you know, an artistic touch to these questions. So the way, uh, the way these turned out are really quite funny. And Brad did a fun job kicking off this conversation on Sunday. I did post all the questions, all 20 of them in the Sunday show. So if any of you want to go see the full list of questions, I felt like some of them might be really cute, like icebreakers for a leadership meeting or a team meeting. But Josh, I figured I'd throw a few at you because we only tried like three or four of them on the Sunday show. So I say we cool. we tackle a few more. Yeah, let's do it. So Josh, let's start out. You're going to give me a number between one through 20 and let's kick it off that way. Four. Four. I love it. All right. Imagine your approach to behavior management as a storyline of a novel how do you navigate plot twists and ensure a happy ending for your characters? This one's a tough one. <laughs> that is a tough one. I'm going to ask you to read. <laughs> I'm going to reread it. Yeah, reread it, please. Yes. Imagine your approach to behavior management as a storyline in a novel. So to me, I'm thinking a storyline in a novel probably has, you know, uh, all the elements of a story where there's like a climax of the story and everything else. I think I would just love for you to give us your approach to behavior management. If it, if it, you had to maybe tell us a genre that it would be in, or uh, maybe we'll get kicked off there. How, how do you approach mystery. behavior management? <laughs> a mystery. That might be a good one. Well, I think like it's, you know, as far as a book goes, the introduction, you're, you're typically trying to learn about the character. There's some development there. So, you know, as far as it being an administrator, especially with a student, a lot of times the students that enter your office, you don't know much about them. It's easy for a teacher because you have so much time with them over the school year. You get to learn quite a bit. But when you're an administrator. Wait, wait. When you say it's easy for a teacher, you didn't mean it's easy for a teacher. You mean it's slightly easier for a teacher correct. because they have that context. I don't think it's easy for anyone, but <laughs> no, not the behavior management, but at least knowing like, okay, maybe as far as who they live with, uh, their interests, you know, things of background knowledge, mm -hmm. to understand and, and have that relationship where when you ask a deeper question, it's, it's not weird because you already have that relationship, hopefully established because you see each other so much. Whereas administrator, there are a lot of times I, I didn't know the students, uh, other than maybe their name and see them in the hallway or in the cafeteria for lunch duty and whatnot. So yeah. I would say the introduction would just be like trying to get to know that person as quickly as possible. Um, so I always like to like not talk about the behavior at all <laughs> at first and really just like sit down and get to know who the child is um, as quickly as possible. So that would be the introduction. The secondary piece would be like the problem, right? Every story has a problem that needs a resolution. So as far as the mystery asking a lot of very impactful questions um, to make sure that you're getting to the bottom of it. And then of course the conclusion and the resolution is like, obviously like in a mystery trying to the who done it. A lot of times the people that you interview <laughs> as an administrator do not tell you the, the correct story. And so you really have to get to the bottom of like what's going on to find the verdict. And then of course, resolution, I always like to have a restorative action component to it so that whoever was in the wrong is actually restoring what they you know, did wrong or broke or whatnot. I think you rocked this answer that <laughs> I'm so impressed for a guy that said, Ooh, I don't know how to, how to answer this. Read it again. That was bomb.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take bomb.com. Goodness. Right. So good. So good. Okay. That was a great way to get us started. I'm going to ask you one next that actually, um, Brad had to answer. He hit it out of the park. I'm curious okay. if you have a different approach. This is picture your teaching style. So Josh, we're going back in time because you were yeah, a teacher a for a ago. long, long time before you were an administrator. Um, I guess administrators have a teaching role in some way in terms of like working with their staff and professional yeah. and support. Different. But let's go with this. Picture your teaching style as a music genre. Which would it be and how does it resonate with the diverse needs of your students? Hmm. I was going to say something on the line that's like very mixed, like a. <laughs> Wait, that's good. Like yeah. a like techno type. Oh. Because 
And the reason for that is because I'm thinking of like mashing up multiple influential sounds together. And so like the art classroom is, I, I remember my administrators coming to my class for the like first time and just being like overstimulated because I had students literally paint my walls and I had stuff on the ceiling tiles and I had sculptures everywhere. And it was just pretty chaotic in the sense of like, it, it felt like electronic rhythms if you will around the classroom yes. but then also the just the busyness and the creativity so I, I think for me i didn't like to teach for a long period of time because i wanted the students to have enough time to work and for me to have individual time with them so you and didn't so, like to lecture for a long period of time no so okay. i had a timer in my head literally of 15 minutes i never wanted to speak longer than 15 minutes and even with demos and whatnot um and I figured like if students had questions beyond that, then I could address that single handedly. But I really wanted the bulk of the time to be time where they either collaborated with each other or they were, you know, working. So it I was energetic. That. It was chaotic and it kind of had a, a, a flow and a dance to it, I guess. Oh, so good. OK, so we all three of us, Brad Hughes and you and I chose different genres for our music. And I think that's so spot on for those of you who want to go check out brad hughes killing this question <laughs> you can head over to the sunday show i will tell you josh i cheated and i was like my teaching style is like whatever genre taylor swift is owning because <laughs> she has like folklore and right. you know like talking about like pop and country and like the variety and sometimes it's fast sometimes it's slow it's always heartfelt mm -hmm. like i just went that realm so i don't think taylor swift is a musical genre but now in the world that we live in like in two years it probably will be it'll be like pop rock you know jazz taylor mm -hmm. swift edm like they'll just be a part of it yeah it's <laughs> kind of like the singer songwriter genre yeah I like where they that. can do whatever they want it's a good vibe yeah. All right. One more. And um, I want to ask you this one only because I, we've talked about it previously. I really like the analogy that's made here. And I just want to put, put this maybe into a few of our, our community's heads. This says handling parental concerns is like managing a customer service hotline. How do oh you turn goodness, each yeah. call? Yeah, right. How do you turn each call into an opportunity to build a stronger partnership? I thought the um, the balance of parent concerns being related to a hotline being so spot on for administrator administrative leaders specifically, because while I always hope parents are reaching out to the classroom teacher, there seems to be a lot of parent calls to our leadership in our schools. Yeah, I think for... For that specifically, I think there are a lot of <laughs> components that are very similar as far right. as like your communication style, you know, having soft tones and not speaking loud and uh, making sure that you're listening and allowing them to have a platform very much like customer service. Now, what I would say is that, you know, in customer service of the business, it's typically like the customer is always right. And I would say that you probably should not have that same mind frame as an administrator or as an educator. <laughs> yeah. But I will say that you know, a lot of times parents and guardians just want a platform to be heard. It's not so much that, you know, whatever they're asking for immediately is what the uh, end result is what is going to happen, but they do want to be heard as far as this is the problem. And I think if you establish that and really are not like talking over them or shutting them down or only giving them a couple minutes, but you're really giving them the gift of time, I think a lot of times just the anger and the frustration gets put out there right away. And then over time they soften up because they, they're the understanding that you truly are concerned and you want to find a resolution. And so allowing them to get that steam off, although sometimes that's difficult <laughs> and they may come with a lot of high emotions. I mm -hmm. think over time, if you can provide that, that to them, that gift of time, I think things do soften down and they kind of like, chill out a little bit and understand, okay, well, let's partner here and, and find something that's going to benefit, benefit the child in the long run, in the long run. So that was always my, <laughs> my strategy was to be as gentle and as nice and calm as possible, even if they were in a high emotional state. 
Mm, so good, Josh. I'm excited to continue to hear from our community of these questions. And although some of them are tricky, this could be a good icebreaker to bring to a leadership meeting or a team meeting to look at the people that you trust in in having a vote and how you support and 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 work make hard decisions in your school system or for your students and having some of these discussions especially with the analogies that are created kind of allow us to have safe conversations as we dive into important topics so thanks for letting me throw some questions at you josh i appreciate it <laughs> well i'm excited to see in the comment section I, I would love to hear what folks are you know thinking as far as those three questions if if they're a, a musical genre or if they're a type of story, um, I'd love to see what they're thinking too. So fun. Friends, we hope you have an amazing day and continue to comment in all of our live stream feeds. As many of you know, we stream our conversations on our, our Teach Better Morning Show on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn, as well as, of course, becoming an episode of Teach Better Talk podcast. If you are looking for podcasts, Teach Better Talk is a great place to start, but it's not where you should end. Head over to our Teach Better podcast network to make sure that you get connected to a variety of different shows, different hosts, different topics. And of course, educators that are supported by the Teach Better community doing really, really good things. And I don't know, there's blogs and everything else, friends. We just always want to be here to support you. So make sure you're involved and sharing your voice because we don't only want you to be a consumer. We want you to be a participant as well. We will see you guys tomorrow morning, bright and early. And uh, it'll be Thursday tomorrow in case any of you are confused on the day. So happy win -win. Monday. <laughs> it's not Monday. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.